Hey guys, very quick video today, um, just to walk you through um, how to build a sort of debt schedule slash model. Um, so, so for those unfamiliar with the channel, my main background is in corporate finance. So I am a associate director at a corporate finance firm. So primarily work in investment banking. And this stuff is really just bread and butter. And I think it would be relatively useful for people sort of looking for looking into moving into sort of corporate finance type roles and just more or less just how to model debt in a pretty efficient way. So uh, let's just jump straight into it. We can just start here with the loan amount. So let's just put in a nice round number here. Let's just say $100,000, our interest rate, perhaps 3% per annum. How many periods we've got in a, in a year? Roughly 12 if we just compound that on a monthly basis. Um, and for the moment, we'll just use an assume that our loan goes for three years. Let's just roll with that. Bye actually agrees with me. Now, a pretty useful for me to calculate the principal and interest uh, repayments based on a given loan amount, interest rate, and uh, tenure is uh, the PMT function. Okay, PMT, and then the 3% that we've got up here, divided by our number of periods being 12 periods, and then the N NPER being the number of per total periods. So as right now, we're assuming 36 months. And then the present value of the loan is $100,000. So let's go through with that. So what we're telling that we're getting told here is effectively that our total principal and interest repayments to repay a loan over this term will be approximately 2.9 grand. Now let's just run through here and assume a loan start date of today. So 20, we'll go over the end of February for that. A good way to model this out is to simply lock your initial starting point to your input. And it's very important to keep your inputs and outputs separate uh, when you're doing your workings. Useful formula just to calculate sort of following month is EO month. And then we're going one month from that. And then that's effectively March 21. And then we can just drag that all the way over across. Now, we're just building out our schedule here. And effectively, what all we're doing here is corkscrew modeling. So we've got an opening balance um, as, as at February, our, end, our more or less closing balance will be $100,000. So we'll just get our signs around the right way just so it's nice and easy to follow. And then our opening balance simply corkscrews from that. So our, and then this is sort of the fundamental basis of you know, financial modeling is this sort of corkscrew approach. We're gonna to have to use some interesting formulas here just to be able to actually make sure that everything calculates correctly um, and we're not tripping ourselves up or putting out a figure that uh, doesn't quite work. Just for... This across as well, just so our periods in our checks and our tickers all line up. Now on a monthly basis, based on what we've set up here, the principal interest rate payments is 2.9. So we'll just go ahead and lock that. We wanna make sure it's an outflow. So we'll just do that as such. And then the periods that we've got here, we're going on a monthly basis. So we just can start off with one. There are many different ways to model this out. So don't stress too much about it. Then we go from effectively one month and we're assuming that perhaps um, the longest tenure that we'll have here is 60 days. So 60 months rather. So that's approximately five years, but we can obviously extend this out if we wanted to look at something like a home loan or something uh, a little bit more long tenured in that respect. My computer just freezing, which is great. Uh, sign of the times lately, um, but we'll keep plodding along. Now, it, it's really important with any sort of financial modeling you're doing that you've got checks and that the, your calculations actually flow through and make sense. Now, the reason we haven't brought this one um, quite through yet is that we need to calculate what is the principal component and what is the interest component. Now, we could go ahead and just plug this number straight in, but I, th but I think for completeness stake and for actual financial modeling fundamentals, it's good to bring this in. Now, the first item that we can bring through here is what our interest payment will be. Let's just 
go ahead and tidy this up first and you will see why well we'll have to change some of these formulas around when we, once we move across if we assume that our interest payment is simply the opening balance multiplied by your interest rate lock that because we're going to drag that across divided by the number of periods in the year and we'll lock that as well you simply hit f4 to lock that then we're getting an interest amount of 250 dollars now that's an outflow so obviously we need to make that a negative so we're dragging that across so right now we've got a decent enough little corkscrew re representing the interest payments that are going to going to come out here but the main thing that's miss omitted from here is our principal components so now we have to work back to be able to calculate what our principal and interest repayments are so effectively it's the delta between the 2.9 and the 250 that'll be our principal outflow um, that we'll have here but we have to use some interesting formulas to try and um, um, run this through now once we've paid off our loan balance we don't want to get this to go into arrears so effectively we're not we need this to be to run down to zero and nothing beyond that so what we can use here is a max and sum function so it's either the maximum of eventually what the repayment schedule has or zero so that that number never hits goes beyond zero because if you don't have these functions then you're going to get some weird um, periods beyond your your time horizon so right now if we just want to do this on a quick and dirty basis we've got our principal and interest payment of 2.9 take away our interest payment so effectively that is 2.6 of the of the print the amount relates to the principal component and 2.250 bucks is the interest component now what we want to do here is we want some checks and balances to make sure that these items are summing through correctly effectively assume that our corkscrew isn't broken here We'll bring this formula across. And then we also want to check our PI amount to our PMT amount. So hypothetically, let's just assume here that our total periods are 12 months. We don't want this amount to be flagging up 8.4K once we're outside of our time horizon. So let's go ahead and play with a little maximum and min formula here. So effectively, what this formula is saying here is that we are going to take J4 plus J6. So that is the opening balance, take away the interest balance. And we want the maximum of that balance that's remaining of well, relative to J11 minus J6. So J11 is our total principal interest and repayment because what you will get here is once you've actually below the payment threshold, that amount will take through and then um, give you an arrears amount if you hadn't used that max or min formula that we had down here. So I drag that formula across. So right now we can tell here for 12 periods, we've got, we effectively pay off at the following increments based on our loan balance. So it's a rel relatively straightforward way to model this out. But we also wanna make sure that our PI to PMT calculation is correct. Cause this amount can get tripped up if it doesn't equal to our 846, which is our amount here. That's good because this is telling us that our loan balance, I mean, this is all just conditional formatting as well, which we can walk through in a later video. But what we need to check here is that if our formula, if we are less than the 12 periods, because we should have paid this off by then, this amount should be equal to the sum 
of U and U5 and U6 take away this amount. And given that we're outside of the, we're on the last month of the periods here, that is effectively what this formula is doing is it was saying, yep, yeah, we're going to return an NA here rather than flagging up another bar, which would be negative in this case. So now we have here, based on this, we've got all our checks and balances of how the, the principal component is calculating, how our corkscrew modeling is actually working through. And now we have a pretty dynamic model in which we can flex with the assumptions here. So we've got the total periods of say 12 months. Say we wanted this to be six months, what would our PMT amount be? Now this, I should really format this gray because this is an output input, if that makes sense. This simply the output of what our principal and interest payment should be based on the, the above inputs. So we can play here with, let's just say we want to pay this down over six months. Our PMT amount, given that we're paying it off a lot quicker, is 16 grand um, per month. And only 2.250 bucks of that relates to interest. Conversely, we want to do that over 24 months. This starts to look more like a sort of home loan repayment schedule, then that is what we are getting through here. So the way to check this would, would be to go to our periods and we, once we get to period, maybe let's just freeze our screen here so that we're not, we can still keep track of all the data. Once we get out to period 24, we can see here that our loan schedule runs down to zero. So effectively, that's what our payment has to be. And the reason we had to go through these min and max formulas is because otherwise this, this amount will simply equal the 4.2, which is the PMT amount that we need to pay off. And what, now, once you've got this set up, it's pretty dyna dynamic. And depending on the financial modeling engagement that you're on, you might not even go need to go to this level of complexity. Oftentimes, you'll just need to back out or pay out the interest. Um, and then once a private inve equity investor is happy to get rid of a or sell out of a business rather, um, then they'll just repay that debt with the proceeds from the business, from the sale rather. Now we could play with this at all as well. We, our interest rate could be 2% and that will push up our PMT amount to 4.6 based on the same amount. And you can put in whatever amount you want here as well. And this is all relatively dynamic and straightforward. So. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that video. It's just a relatively quick one, just around sort of the corporate finance fundamentals of how to build out a loan schedule. And realistically, you might not even need to go much more complicated uh, than this, but it's just a, I guess, a demonstration of how to use min and max formulas um, in order to make sure that your schedule is robust and doesn't give you weird circular errors here. Um, and I hope you guys enjoy that. I can um, elaborate more on financial modeling fundamentals and other ways to, to best, um, best model out things, not just a debt schedule, but also uh, broader three-way modeling, PL balance sheet cash flow, because um, this is my wheelhouse and this is the, the I guess, skill set that I really bring to the table rather than simply, you know, talking about a drug that, or hair loss, which I have more anecdotal experience in. This is my bread and butter and how I get paid. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comment box below. Thanks and have a good day.